Dear learners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and today we are going to talk about how psychologists study. How psychologists study is a great question because most of the people think that psychology is a magic as I have discussed with you in the last program. Now we shall discuss in detail that what are those scientific techniques which help the psychologist to draw on conclusions and make theories about human behavior. The objectives of today's program are to describe the goals of psychological studies and research. The second is to explain basic and applied aspects of research and the last one is to familiarize with experimental methods used by the psychologist. Let us first begin with the first objective which is the goals of psychological studies and research. Psychologists try to understand the nature and functioning of behavior and experiences. They make efforts to develop knowledge of phenomena in such a manner that can fulfill the requirements of science. Here science refers to a method of systematic inquiry which is based on unbiased observation. When I say unbiased observation, this means that which is not related to your personal experiences and the observations are based on scientific logic. In everyday life, our observations are often biased by our liking or disliking. In fact, we accept what others say and our impressions become part of our personal understanding which may be wrong or right because it is based on our personal liking or disliking. A scientist relies only on the observation which are not influenced by personal preferences but are free from such biases. The scientific study is objective. When I say objective, this means that whatever you are saying is based on a scientific logic. We will understand it how. It is supposed to be free from subjective factors and it is seen observed or experienced in the same way by each and everyone who follows the given method. There are various goals of psychological researches as I am discussing. Let us understand these goals in detail. As scientists, psychologists also try to achieve some goals regarding the objective of their study. The first objective or aim of a psychological study is to describe the phenomena. The first step towards gaining understanding is to obtain a proper or systematic description of the phenomena which is under the study. It determines the range and boundary of the phenomena. For example, description or describing a phenomena means the same as you describe a boy. For example, in this picture, you can see in order to describe this person, we would describe it in terms of his hair color, the eye color, the skin color, his age, height, what is he wearing, etc. That is the complete description of the phenomena. That is, in order to begin with a problem, we need to describe first that what is the problem which has to be undertaken as the study. The second step is known as explanation. Explanation means statement of the factors which determine the phenomena under study. In other words, one may say that explanation provides the factors which make something happen. That is what may be the probable causes which are causing this event to take place or this problem to happen. When we say explanation, this is when a psychologist shows that a practice leads to change in behavior he or she is explaining. This is one example which means that how do you practice leads to a change in behavior or how do you practice affects your learning. This is that explaining the behavior of learning. How he is explaining? He explains that the kind of practice you do affects your learning. Prediction is the next aim of the psychological research. Once we are able to get the explanation of some phenomena, we are in a position to tell or predict what will happen under certain circumstances. For example, if you are studying for 3 hours a day, how this study or how this hard work is going to affect your learning. The ability to make prediction is based on systematic analysis. 
of the various causal factors. The presence or absence of those factors can help one to tell what will happen in future that is with the help of his researches the psychologist will try to understand that if these situations exist then what will happen in the future if the child studies for three years then how it affects his learning if he doesn't do any study or any hard work in a day then how it will affect his or her studies that is predicting a phenomena that is how do you predict it is really not like a magic but the prediction is also based on the scientific logic the last thing is to control that is the last aim of the psychological research is to control the phenomena under study when i say control let us understand how the ability to predict which we just discussed provides the knowledge necessary to bring the change that is desirable that is what do you actually want out of the study for example practicing yoga or relaxation can be used to improve health and quality of life of the people we know that if we do yoga or any kind of exercise this will help in improving on our health and the quality of our life now the knowledge can be used to produce results desired by the user of knowledge this is however is possible only when we have scientific knowledge this means that because we know that we have predicted that if we exercise daily then we'll have a better life so in order to have a better life how do we control the bad habits in life that is by doing yoga so this is you have done some research and from your research you have found that daily exercise leads to a healthy life so you have predicted and now you are controlling the bad habits of living a life by inculcating the practice of yoga or certain exercises in an individual's lifestyle that is you have controlled the unhealthy lifestyle of an individual now the second objective of today's program is to differentiate between two kinds of researches one is a basic research and an applied research any study or research begins with a question or problem that we want to answer or solve such problems are of various types one broad way to classify these problems is to put them in basic and the applied categories we will discuss in detail how do we categorize these kinds of problems first is the basic research now let us understand what do we mean by basic research basic research deals with developing understanding theory building and testing of a theory and applied research deals with solving real life problem when i say basic research this means that through various researches psychologists have come to the conclusion that a healthy lifestyle leads to a healthy life this means a theory has been built on the basis of research they have theorized this thing now how do they apply this comes under the applied research the basic research focuses on providing theoretical understanding that is i have made a theory that if you have a healthy lifestyle you have a good life ahead it offers understanding in terms of principles and laws which are not confined to limited circumstances or persons this means that it is for everyone that if we follow certain healthy practices in our life we are going to lead a better life applied research applied research has a narrow goal of solving a very specific problem it is concrete in its orientation and confines itself to a limited condition let us differentiate it from basic research i said psychologists have found that if you lead a healthy lifestyle you will have a better life that is they have made a theory now how do they apply this theory that is known as applied research say for example one individual comes to a psychologist with some health problem so what is the job of the person who is dealing with application of the psychological phenomena he will take the case study of that unhealthy individual and will try to find out the pattern of lifestyle that the individual follows if 
it is found that the individual has a unhealthy pattern of living his or her life the psychologist on the basis of the theory will try to inculcate the healthy habits in an individual the psychologist will try to counsel the individual to lead a healthy lifestyle that is based on the basic research based on the theory that is there in the books he will apply that theory to help the individual solve his health problem that is how basic and applied research are different let us come to the last objective and very important objective of today's program that is what is experimental method as i have discussed with you earlier that how psychologists study which means that psychologists are applying different kinds of technique in order to gather data and to use that data for solving various problems so one of the uh, method which psychologists use is known as experimental method experimental method is generally preferred above other methods because of its ability to understand the causal factors causal factors means that what is the cause behind a particular phenomena the experimental method helps psychologists establish cause and effect relationship which means that if this is the cause how it is going to affect the phenomena which is cause and effect relationship between these two sets of conditions which are usually considered as variables now we will discuss what do we mean by variables whenever we are talking about experimental method we are going to use this term which is known as variables now in the experimental method the psychologist follows certain steps to collect the data and undertake the study suppose a teacher wants to know if recitation method will aid retention of a poem than silent reading she will proceed in the following manner to answer a problem the teacher has a question or problem in which effect of one thing that is recitation method on the other that is retention has to be explored from this statement it is clear that recitation method which means that learning something aloud the recitation method is the cause will affect the learning that is the first statements explains that what is the cause the cause is how do you how do you learn the matter you are uh, learning the poem by uh, doing recitation or by doing it silently the cause and its effect on your retention that you are able to memorize better when you recite it or better when you silently try to learn it on the basis of previous knowledge and researches the experimenter forms a hypothesis what is a hypothesis the experimenter will first of all define on the basis of previous experiments give a probable answer to the situation what is the situation the method of learning and effect on the memory so what is the probable answer the psychologist may hypothesize that the recitation method is better for retention of a poem as compared to learning that poem silently to verify the hypothesis she will undertake an experiment so how the psychologist is going to take an experiment it is a uh, little bit different from the physics experiment or the chemistry experiment let us understand how first of all in order to conduct an experiment in psychology the psychologist will try to identify the independent and the dependent variable it is very important to understand the independent and dependent variable whenever we talk about experimental method in order to understand experimental method one must be familiar with the concept of variables variable is any measurable attribute of objects things or beings they can be various variables quantitatively measured variables that means which has some value are age intelligence number of trials sex religion caste etc the experimenter is concerned with two main kinds of variables 
one is an independent variable and another is an dependent variable. An independent variable is manipulated by the experimenter. For example, method of learning is independent variable in the present case because when I discussed I said that how the method of learning or how the recitation method will affect learning. So, independent variable is method of learning the cause independent variable in order to understand its effect on some chosen aspect of behavior which is your learning. Now effects of independent variable IV here refers to independent variable and DV here refers to dependent variable. The effects of independent variable are observed on the dependent variable. In other words dependent variable is the consequent variable on which the effect is to be observed. While studying the effect of independent variable on the dependent variable the relationship is often influenced by a number of factors that may be present in the environment. Such relevant variables need to be controlled by the experimenter. What do we mean by these uh, variables? They are external variables. Say for example, we are only interested in the recitation method that is how you are learning, how you are processing the information on the effect which is how you have learned. But how you are learning can contain other variables also. For example, you might be learning in a noisy environment. You might be learning somewhere where there is not too much light or sufficient light to read the material. That means if you do not have sufficient light to read on what has to be learned, then your learning will be affected. So in this case, the light becomes the external variable. We have to control such variables because we are only interested in the independent variable which is how do you learn recitation method. In order to uh, have control over the uh, such external variables, the experimenter plans the experiment using two groups that is experimental and control group. Say for example, there are 30 students in your class, then we are going to divide the class into two groups. One is to be in the experimental group and other has to be kept in the control group. What are experimental and control group? The experimental group receives the treatment of independent variable and control group performs in the absence of independent variable. This means that in order to see the effect of the kind of learning technique on the kind of memory, I am going to divide it, you into two groups. One of the group receives the treatment. Treatment means for example, I am asking you or I am instructing you to read it aloud and the control group is not given any information about how to learn. The control group is trying to learn the matter on its own. Now these two groups are supposed to be similar in all respect except the treatment of the independent variable. This means that I have taken students from your class only and not taking students from higher class or from the lower class which means that those who are present in the two groups are similar in every other aspect except then the treatment which means that treatment here is you can take it as an example of a drug. Say for example treatment here is recitation method. You can imagine that recitation method can be taken as a kind of medicine. I am giving medicine to the treatment or the experimental group whereas the control group is not receiving any kind of medicine or it is not receiving any kind of treatment here in this case. Now I am going to see the difference between the two groups. The next important step in the experimental method is sampling of participants. Sampling means what kind of sample I am taking for my experiment. Sample means I am trying to as I discussed with you that I am taking students of your class only. Say for example, you are in class 10. So I am taking all the student of class 10 
I am not taking class 12 students and I am not or I am not taking class 9 students. That is how do I take the sample for my study. If one wants to take the students of 10th class for the experiment, she cannot possibly go to all schools. So, she decides to take equal number of students of 10th class of one school. A sample represents the whole population. Let me make it more clear to you. Say for example, you are judged somewhere in a cooking competition. So, you will take only a little sample from every contestant's plate in order to understand how the dish tastes. That is, you are not going to take the whole of the thing which is there in the plate. That is going to give you an idea. That is, the whole population, say in this case, is the entire dish but you are taking a little bit of it. So, in the same manner, I am not taking all the students of the class 10 from the whole of the town. I am just taking a sample out of the all the 10th class students in the town. Here in this picture, you can see the colors of the dresses are different but the student are belonging to the same 10th class. You can imagine that. This means that I have taken different students from different schools but they all are belonging to the 10th class. So, this is my sample out of the population of 10th class students. Now, I have to do a random sampling. Random sampling means that I am not going to be selective while taking people for my uh, study. Say for example, I am not going to take only the intelligent one from the class or only the unintelligent ones from the class. For example, I will have a bowl and in that bowl there are names of the students. I will not see and I will pick randomly that I have to take 15 students. So, I will pick randomly and I will not be selective while, while taking the sample. Why this is done? Because in this way of sampling, everyone of the population, everyone who belongs to 10th class have an equal probability of getting selected for the experimenter. And this random sampling gives the better measures. Say for example, here are uh, certain, uh, you can imagine that if the, these are students, those who are sitting and the experimenter has to select, the experimenter is not going to be selective by selecting pupil for the study. He is going to pick randomly the students for the study. Now the next step is to control the exterior variables. I just discussed with you that it is not only the recitation method which is affecting your learning. It might be the noise around you or it might be the light around you which may affect your learning. So there is a possibility that some other variables, maybe the age, the gender affect the retention. Say for example, when I say age, this means that I am again and again repeating that I will take students of 10th class only, which means that age can be a factor in retention. If I take 8 years student, then her retention is going to be different as compared to the student belonging to 15 years of age. So that means I have to control the age factor here. I may control the gender factor here. I might take only the girls or only the boys. See, whatever is the extraneous variable has to be controlled. All these variables have to be controlled in order to do so. The experimenter selects participants of similar intelligence, similar age and gender. Experimenter may use a number of techniques to control the unwanted extraneous variables. So, what are those techniques? First technique is known as matching. Matching means the participants are matched on their characteristics. In this example, the participants will be taken if they are in 10th class only. Elimination. An unwanted variable may be controlled by elimination, which is the second technique for putting a control. So, elimination here, say for example, is the noise. Noise means that if you are learning in an environment where there is too much noise, then how I am going to control it? I will take you to a place which is free of 
noise. So, noise was an extraneous vari variable and it has been eliminated by the experimenter. The third technique is known as constancy of the condition. If elimination is not possible, the condition may be made constant for the entire duration of the experiment. When I say constant condition, this means that if noise cannot be controlled, then what the experimenter is going to do? The experimenter is going to make the conditions constant. Say for example, the control group and the experimental group are going to learn in the same kind of noise. That means the condition of noise has been made constant in the study. The very important step in the experimental method is known as planning or designing the experimenter. The experimenter will select group of students, divide them in half and give them same material, poem in this case, to memorize. One group is instructed to read the material silently. I said it has to be the control group. The other group recites the poem loudly. Loudly means the treatment which is given for the same amount of time. This group is known as experimental group. Retention of both the groups will be compared. That means that under the treatment condition, what is your retention? And under the no treatment condition, what is the retention? Say for example, this is a group and I am going to divide this group into two equal halves and then I am going to study the kind of technique that you use while studying and what is its effect on the dependent variable which is your learning. Verifying the hypothesis. If the experimenter finds a significant difference in the amount retained by the two groups, she may infer that recitation method is better for retention of points. These findings will prove the hypothesis. In the very earlier slides, I said that hypothesis is the probable answer to the question. The question is the kind of learning technique used and how it is affecting the retention. So, I said that based on the previous experiments, the researcher had made a hypothesis that recitation method is better for retention. So, when the experimentation found the significant difference between the learning of two groups, the control group and the experimental group, which means that the learning of the experimental group was better because of the recitation method as compared to the control group, this means that the hypothesis is proven now. Although the experimental method is widely used in the psychological research, it has certain limitations as well. What are those limitations? The experimental method is very powerful for gathering scientific data, but it also has limitations. The findings obtained from this may not apply to the natural situations because we are trying to control the situations. So, it may or may not influence the behavior of the individual. Sometimes an experiment might prove unethical or dangerous. In some situation, experiment may interfere with behavior that is measured because everyone becomes conscious that they are under study. So, their actual behavior might be affected. So, these are certain kinds of limitations of the experimental method. This was all for today's program. Thank you.